All right, y'all, let's do it. Let's get into my predictions for the 2024 Grammys. Y'all ready? Let's go. I came to vibe, you came to function, just do that, baby. Don't worry about nothing, no, no, no. What's good, y'all? It's your boy Bright here, the R&B Kid, and I'm back again with another episode of On the Bright Side TV. Welcome back. How you doing? Hope you're doing very well. Listen, y'all, for all of us who live in the colder states, it's getting cold. Hope y'all staying warm and happy Thanksgiving season. Happy holidays to all y'all. You know, sending love to all of you guys. And just a quick reminder, y'all, for those of you who haven't uh, subscribed already, Definitely go subscribe to my Patreon channel. I created a new Patreon where I have exclusive content related to, you know, longer reaction videos for like full album reactions. I have my bright side mixes and other exclusive content. I'll have it on my Patreon page. So definitely go subscribe to my Patreon. Go support. It's five dollars a month right now. I appreciate y'all and definitely go support. Link down below in the description. Appreciate y'all. Thank you. <laughs> Um, as promised, I am back with my prediction video for the 2024 Grammys after my uh, nomination prediction video, which I hope you guys you know enjoyed, and also my reaction to the Grammy nominations when they came out earlier this month. Like I said in that video, I have to say, while every year there are definitely you know major snubs and surprises, good and bad on both sides, I have to say I feel like for the most part, I want to say this year's Grammy nominations for the 2024 Grammys has probably been the least annoyed and least irked and least upset I've been after a nominations announcement. So shout out to the Academy for, you know, obviously making the membership more inclusive and diverse over the years. We were seeing how, to, you know, kind of play out in front of our faces in real time. They're far from perfect. The Academy still has a lot of work to do and they're still going to be on some bullshit as they are every year with, you know, key, you know, snubs and surprises that are just wrong. But for the most part, this year was the year I felt the least annoyed and the least upset. So I have to commend them for that. And this year's nominations, for the most part, they're a little bit like, you know, kind of not, I wouldn't say like dry or boring, but they're very, they were very predictable. And, you know, there weren't too many crazy things that happened, which is a good thing. But also, you know, they, like I said, they still have a lot of work to do in terms of, you know, spreading the wealth and really giving recognition to a lot of key nominations that should happen every year that somehow tend to not happen and I'll, I'll mention them in this video but and i mentioned them in my other videos as well but you know that's just that's the name of the game every year but i hope we can continue to get that together and uh going into that before i get into my predictions for all the categories that i care about and some other ones as well i just want to kind of run through a summary of like my thoughts and the major snubs and surprises so i'll say first up at bat I want to mention to me the one artist who I think was, whose shout out to me was like the most egregious and disrespectful. And I tweeted about this. To me, all the other snubs I had this year, like I, I can like live with them. But to me, the one artist that I was like, whoa, the fact that they didn't get any nominations in the categories I thought they would get nominations in. And I hope you can agree with me on this is Ray. My girl Ray, to me, put out one of the best albums this year and also one of the best songs that came out in this Grammy year with Escapism. That song, that her album, just and just her as an artist, it was such a breath of fresh air for me this year. I love her. And I'm, I'm so looking forward to her her future career because she's a, she's a special artist that is really not getting enough love and attention, especially in the U.S. And, you know, her home, you know, her homeland of, you know, the U.K., she's definitely, you know, been doing her thing for years. But the U.S. has been so slow to like really uh, embrace her besides escapism for a little bit this year when it, when it became a little hit. But I really thought the Grammys were going to redeem her by nominating her. And I thought she was going to be a lock for a best new artist and best pop duo slash group performance for escapism with her in 070 Shake. To me, she should have been a lock for at least one, if not both of those categories. So the fact that she missed both of those categories to me was like egregious as hell. And I, I just I'm not going to be I'm never going to get over that. I hope she gets future nominations to make up for it, but I'm never going to get over the fact that she com was completely shut out this year in a year which, to me, she was one of the best artists that was putting out music and doing her thing this year. Escapism is an amazing record that should have been recognized in pop duo. And even though it didn't need those nominations, I would have loved for it to have gotten either record and or song of the year. It really would have deserved those nominations. But at least best new artist or pop duo that should have happened for Ray, and I'm I'm really upset that didn't happen. And other snubs this year that to me I like are not egregious, but I wasn't I didn't like them in the army categories. Usher, I don't like that he was shut out. He should have got nominations for sure. Daniel Caesar, Dolce, uh, Q, October London. 
Uh, to me, those are the shutouts in the Army categories that I wasn't a fan of. I can live with them, but they all should have gotten at least one nomination some, somewhere. There really was room for all of them to get at least one nomination. So I'm upset that all those artists didn't get love in the Army categories. In the rap categories, um, even though I'm not personally upset about it, I really was shocked that Gunna fought, was nowhere with, with um, Fuck You Mean. Gunna should have been here. A lotto didn't even get love for you know her track with uh, Jungkook Cook Seven or in the rap categories were put on the floor again with her and Cardi B. Uh, speaking of Cardi B, also Glorilla and Cardi B with their track tomorrow too. I'm really upset that we didn't have more uh, more of a female presence in the rap categories this year with how much of a female dominant year it was. You know we got love for Nicki and Ice Spice and Doja Cat, but we really should have and and, and, uh, and uh, Coyle Ray. Good, but we really should have gotten some love for Lotto, Cardi B, and Glorilla with their tracks as well. And uh, in the African music category, uh, LeBianco with People. I don't understand how LeBianca's song didn't get nominated. Besides Calm Down, that was probably one of the biggest African songs that came out this year that the world loved. So I'm really surprised that LeBianca's Le People missed that category. She should have been unlocked. And I low-key would have had her winning. So I don't really know why she wasn't nominated. So that was egregious to me. But we move on. So those are all my major like you know snubs and shutouts. Um, in terms of you know good surprises that I love just this year, uh, besides Sissa wasn't surprised, but I'm definitely rooting for her. She's the artist I'm rooting for the most this year. I'm so excited for her. I'm so proud of her. Shout out to her running the show this year with nine nominations. That's amazing. A black girl did that. A black woman did that. Come on, Sissa, you deserve. Uh, but besides that, the other surprises I want to talk about definitely Victoria Monet. I wasn't surprised that she got nominations, but I was surprised that she got seven. Like that's what I was so surprised at. Like especially. You know, her love and record of the year, I was so surprised by it, but I was so happy about it. Like, so deserved. Best new artist, I didn't predict it because for some reason, I thought they would pass over in that category. But I, I'm, I don't know why I didn't follow my instinct in thinking that she should have been a front runner for that category because of the year she had. So shame on me for not kind of, you know, calling it, but I'm glad she's the best new artist. You know, and she really ran through all the army categories. Like, I love that for her. I'm so proud of her. Best engineered album. Like, it's amazing. Uh, and definitely John Batiste as well. He's the other surprise I really wanted to mention this year. I knew he would get at least like, you know, a few nominations, but I think he got up to like five, I think, or maybe even up to like seven, I think. So I'm like surprised that he got as many as he did, but not that surprised, but I am surprised. I'm happy for him. So that was definitely a nice, pleasant surprise as well to see all the love that John Batiste got for his amazing world music radio album that was definitely deserving of all the, those nominations. So shout out to him for that. Uh, he's in all the general categories, which is amazing. Uh, so again, man, so, and this year, thankfully, there's no, like, really, like, whack surprises to me. Like, all the surprises that came up this year for me, like, weren't, like, that terrible or, or either I liked them or if I didn't like them, they weren't, like, that annoying to me. So that's a good thing this year. There wasn't no, like, DJ Khaled or Jack Hollow and Best Rap Album. Like, that didn't happen this year. Nothing like that happened this year, which is good. So, <laughs> all right, y'all, but let's get into my predictions for the, for the categories I care about. Um, so we'll go through who I think will win in the category, who I think should win, and who are my potential spoilers um, for each category. So let's get into it, and let, let me see what y'all think. Let's go. All right, y'all. First category we got is Record of the Year. So I think this is a pretty easy category. So for Record of the Year, uh, the song that I think will win, and that's Flowers by Miley Cyrus. I definitely think Flowers will win. And I'll be happy if it does. When I first heard the song, I actually hated it, which is so funny, but now I love it. Uh, it took me a little bit of time, but I finally got into Flowers. But I definitely think Flowers is going to take this, take this win for sure. I'll be surprised if I'm wrong. I won't be surprised if I'm wrong, but I feel like she's definitely going to take it. Who I think should win this category, though, if I had it my way, I would give it to On My Mama by Victoria Monet. Y'all know I'm the R&B guy, so I had to go for the R&B song. It's just my favorite song in the category. I feel like it's a whole bop, so I would give it to Victoria Monet's On My Mama. Uh, but I, she's not going to win, but that's okay. And the spoilers in this category, we definitely have a few. If it's not going to go to Flowers, I can see this category going to either Kill Bill or Anti-Hero or What Was I Made For. I definitely feel like all three of those songs have a great shot at being the spoiler for this category. If it's not SZA, I could definitely see it being Taylor's Anti-Hero. And in a Dark Horse moment, I could definitely see Billie Eilish's What Was I Made For taking this as well. So we'll see what happens. All right, next category is Song of the Year. So I feel pretty good about my prediction for Song of the Year, who I think will win this category, and that's definitely Anti-Hero by Taylor Swift. I feel like this is gonna be her redemption for having been one of our most you know, famous and renowned songwriters of our generation, yet never having won uh, the Song of the Year Grammy. So I feel like this is kind of like perfect timing you know, perfectly, you know, culminating into her finally winning this category. So I feel like Anti-Hero 
will win this category. Who I think should win this category, that's What Was I Made For by Billie Eilish. Just a beautiful song, a beautiful record, a beautiful ballad that was written so beautifully and exquisitely. Uh, it's not gonna win. I mean, it could win, but I don't think it will, but it's, that's why I would give the win to. Uh, my spoilers for this category, again, what was I made for by Billie Eilish? I could definitely see stealing it in a dark horse moment. Or if it's not that song, I could definitely see it being either Flowers by Miley Cyrus or actually Butterfly by John Batiste. Next category is Album of the Year. So I'm actually really excited about this category. It's the biggest category every year because even though my mind wants to tell me to not think this way, my heart is pulling me this way and I want to listen to it. Who I think will win this category, I hate to be wrong about this, but I feel like we're gonna finally make it right. Between us black folk, us R&B, hip hop fans, and the Grammys, who I think will win this category is SZA's SOS. I think it will happen. If you think about it, everything has culminated perfectly to SZA winning this category and having this moment. She low-key had one of the biggest albums of the year, even though Taylor sold way more units, SZA, I think, had the album that had the most cultural impact this year, and she was able to back it up with sales and plenty of hits, even more so than Taylor's album. So I really feel like this is gonna be her moment. I feel like it'll happen. Uh, I'll explain, if when it when it finally does happen, I'll explain why I thought more, I can go more in depth about it, you know, when I do my review of the Grammys. Uh, but for now, I'll just keep it at that. And I do think SZA will win album of the year with SOS, and I can't wait to see this moment happen. So we'll talk more about that later, hopefully when it does happen. Uh, who I think should win this category, definitely SOS by SZA. I feel like it's the album that should win, in my opinion. I know I'm biased because I'm an R&B lover, but I just feel like it should win, point blank period. Uh, nothing else to say about that. Uh, but if there were to a spoiler, if it's not gonna be SOS, I could definitely see it being obviously Midnight's by Taylor Swift, or uh, The Record by Boy Genius, or even, again, for this, you know, uh, concept for a consecutive win, uh, John Batiste with World Music Radio. I can see any of those scenarios happening. I could definitely see Midnight's winning. I could see, uh, you know, the record winning by Boy Genius. I could see John Batiste winning again. But I definitely think that SZA should and will win this year. But let's see what happens come February 4th. Next category is Best New Artist. I feel good about this category as well. I'm so excited about this category and you guys will find out why in a second. Who I think will win this category? Victoria Monet. To me, it actually makes the most sense. I'm rooting for her and I think it will happen. And I'm mad I didn't predict her, even though I wanted her the whole time. So I, I'm actually glad that he's nominated her, like I said before. And I actually think she will win. And she's who I think should win as well. I think Victoria definitely should win this category. To me, she had the, the best, not the biggest, but she had the best breakout year. The biggest, but definitely goes to you know either Ice Spice or Coco Jones. But in my opinion, who had the best breakout year, that's Victoria Monet. So I think she will and I think she should win. Spoilers in this category, we have a lot. Uh, this is a very wide open category. I can see Ice Spice taking it. I can see Noah Kahan being a spoiler. I can see Coco Jones being a spoiler. And I could also see Jelly Roll being another spoiler as well. I can see any of those scenarios happening, but I think Victoria Monet will and should win. Next category is Producer of the Year, non-classical. Now it's been moved to the general field. Uh, this is an interesting category this year because I think who will win is Jack Antonoff for what I think is either the second or third year in a row. I think Jack Antonoff will win this category. And I won't be mad at it, but I hate that it's gonna be the third win in a row for him if it does happen. Because who I think should win is my guy d Mile, also known as Durnst E. Mill II. I definitely think d Mile should win this category, especially because I don't think he was nominated last year when he should have been nominated for producing Silk Sonic's album and Lucky Day's album, Candy Drip. He wasn't even nominated, I don't think, and he should have been. So definitely Dima, I think she'll win this category, but I think it'll go to Jack Antonoff. Other spoilers, if it's not Dima being a spoiler, I could definitely also see uh, Hip Boy and Metro Boomin also being spoilers as well. And I would, I'll be happy with any of these other brothers winning, whether it's Hip Boy or Metro Boomin, uh, but I definitely think it'll go to Jack Antonoff. And I hope if it's not Jack Antonoff that Dima will take it. But, all right, y'all, for Songwriter of the Year, I'm not gonna hold you guys. I actually have no idea who's taking this. I'm not even gonna hold you. I'm not gonna pretend like I have my winner for this category because I don't. I don't know who will win this. I don't know who will win. Uh, who I think should win, just not because I, I'm a little biased because it's really the only person I'm really familiar with in terms of like their, the work they made and who they are. And that's Teron Thomas. I love Teron Thomas. I love, you know, I love his work. 
He's I, he's a legend in the game to me. So I don't know any of the other songwriters like that, so I feel bad, but that's who I would want to win. Again, I don't know who will win, and I don't know who are the spoilers as well. So this category, I'm not really on it like that, but it is what it is. But if you guys have thoughts on this category, please let me know down below. Now we're on to best pop solo performance. Uh, so I think this is a pretty easy category. Uh, who I think will win, uh, definitely Flowers by Miley Cyrus. I think it'll correlate with her record of the year win. And I think it makes the most sense to me, even though uh, we definitely have some spoilers in this category. Who I think should win is What Was I Made For by Billie Eilish. Even though I love Flowers, I think to me the best song in this category is definitely What Was I Made For by Billie. Like I said, love the song, it's a beautiful record. It's who I want to win, but I think Flowers will win. So who I think is a spoiler for this category, that to me that's easy, and that's definitely either Antihero by Taylor Swift or What Was I Made For by Billie Eilish. To me, these are the only songs that could spoil in this category. You know, even though Taylor has not been, you know, a favorite and she's not really had the best luck in the pop categories, I definitely think Antihero was big enough and loved enough that it definitely could win this category over Flowers, but I still think Flowers will win. And definitely what was that made for as a shot as well. I got a love across the board this year, so it could definitely take this category as well, even though I think it'll miss out on this category. All right, now we're on to best pop duo slash group performance. And y'all, I hate this category. <laughs> I'm sorry, I have to be honest. This is probably my least favorite category this year. I hate this category. The fact that escapism is not here is, is annoying to me. The fact that Boys Liar Part 2 is not here, it's not annoying, but I really wish it was here. Especially when you look at all the options here. I just don't like this, I don't like this category at all. Besides Ghost in the Machine. But I will say who I think will win this category. That's definitely Taylor Swift and Ice Spice with Karma. It's who I was hoping was not going to be nominated in this category because I think they have definitely have the best shot to win. I, lo I love the original song Karma by itself, but I don't like the version with Ice Spice. I feel like she Ice Spice didn't make the song better, and I don't like Ice Spice's participation and contribution to the song, even though I do like Karma by itself. But I do think Karma will win. Yeah, but who I think should win this category, that's definitely Ghost in the Machine by SZA and Phoebe Bridgers. I love that song. It's, it's the only song in the category that I really love, love. Uh, so I, that's who I think should win this category, Duffy Ghost in the Machine. And I, also, I think Ghost in the Machine can spoil as well. It's, it's one of the spoilers I have for this category. I definitely think SZA and Phoebe have a shot to win. But if not them, I also think Lana Del Rey and John Batiste with their song Candy Necklace definitely has a shot to win as well. I could definitely see them being a surprise dark horse to win this category if Karma loses. Next category is Best Pop Dance Recording. I feel good about this category. I'm excited for him. Who I think will win this category and who I think should win this category. And that's Troy Savon with Rush. I love this record. It's such a good song. It's so well produced. It's so well arranged and constructed. It's a whole bop. Troy did his thing with this record. I love the song. It gets better the more and more I hear it. So I definitely think Rush will and should win this category. Uh, other spoilers in this category, definitely Padam Padam by Kylie Minogue. I had her winning for a while, but when I thought about it, I was like, you know what? Even though Padam Padam was a moment this year, I don't really care about that song like that, but it was a moment in the, in the music world. I still think Rush will take it. I, th I think Rush should take it. But I think Padam Padam definitely has a shot to win if Rush, is lo if Rush loses. But I could definitely see Miracle by Ellie Golding and Calvin Harris being a dark horse to win if Rush or Padam Padam doesn't end up taking it. And now on to what I think is one of the easiest categories this year, and that's definitely uh, Best Pop Vocal Album. To me, this is a no-brainer. Who I think will win this category, that's definitely Midnight's by Taylor Swift. I'll be surprised if she doesn't win this category, but that's who I definitely think will win. But who I think should win personally, I am rooting for Guts by Libby Rodrigo. I love Olivia and I love the Guts album and I think it's, to me, this is the album in a category that I love the most and that I think deserves to win the most. But I can't deny the fact that Taylor's Midnight's just had a, was a really big moment this year. Sales wise, you know, in terms of impact, it really was a whole moment. And it had more time to simmer compared to Guts this year. So I think that'll be, that'll, you know, that'll favor Taylor Swift. So I think Midnight's will win this category. I definitely see it winning. But who I think should win is definitely Guts by Olivia. And I see Guts being my spoiler as well. If so, for some reason Midnight's loses, it'll lose to Guts by Olivia Rodrigo for sure. All right, now we're on to the R&B categories. And first up, we got best R&B performance. So I'm a little bit indifferent to this category this year because I feel like no matter what happens, I'll, I'll be happy. But I'm also upset because I feel like what I want to happen is not gonna happen. So who I think will win this category, that's definitely Kill Bill by SZA. And as much as I love this song, as much as I love SZA, I actually don't want her to win this category. 
who I think should win this category, and that's I See You by Coco Jones. I See You to me is the much better R&B performance. While Kill Bill is a bop, to me Kill Bill is like more of a pop record. Uh, but when I think of a true R&B performance, that's I See You. Like Coco Jones just killed this record. She ate it up. It really is a truly a uh, classic, timeless, breathtaking R&B performance that I feel like deserves this win. But I don't think she can compete with the massive moment that Kill Bill will. So I think Kill Bill will win this category. Uh, but unfortunately, that's what happened. But I think if I had it my way, uh, ICU should win this category. Uh, my spoiler for this category is definitely ICU by Coco Jones and also How Does It Make You Feel by Victoria Monet. I don't think, and I don't think Victoria will win this category, but I think she has a shot to be a Dark Horse winner. Uh, but I definitely think this is a battle between Kill Bill and ICU. I think Kill Bill will win, uh, but if I had it my way, I would give it to ICU. Next up is Best Traditional R&B Performance. So this will be interesting to see what happens this year because I'm actually not really sure if I'm right about this, but I hope I am. Uh, who I think will win, and that's Victoria Monet with her track Hollywood featuring Earth, Wind & Fire and her daughter Hazel Monet. This will be crazy if this happens because that means her daughter Hazel will be a Grammy winner at two, like, at two years old, which is insane. But I do think that this song will win this category. And I also think Hollywood should win this category. To me, it's the best song in this category. It's the most traditional to me. And to me, it's the, it's the best, you know, performance. It's the best record in this category. So I think it will, and I think it should win. Shout out to everybody involved. Uh, but spoilers for this category, we have two. It's definitely Love Language by SZA. And even though I love this record, I don't really, it's really the only song she could have submitted from her album in this category, so I get it. But it's not really that traditional of a song, so I don't know. But it definitely could spoil for this for the win for this category. And also, Simple by Babyface and Coco Jones could definitely be a Dark Horse winner for this. Not a Dark Horse, it definitely could be another alternative winner for this category. Definitely see Love Language and Simple having a shot to win. There's a great chance that one of them could take it, but I really am rooting for it. And I do think that Hollywood by Victoria Monet will take this category. Next up is, to me, one of the most fire categories at the Grammys this year, and it has been for a, for a couple years now, and that's Best R&B Song. I love this category. This category is fire through and through. Who I think will win this category, and that's my girl SZA with Snooze. I think Snooze will win this category, and that's a song that I think should win this category. As much as I love all these other songs in the category, I just think Snooze, to me, is like one of the most classic, timeless, and it will go on to be one of the most impactful you know, R&B songs from this generation. Shout out to Babyface, shout out to Leon Thomas, and shout out to SZA and all the other writers of the song that just ate, that killed this record. This song, is a, this song really is a one of one. So I think it will, and I think it should win this category. Other spoilers for this category, definitely On My Mama by Victoria Monet. I think this song has a shot as well. It was to me, after, after Snooze, was probably one of the most impactful songs this year in the culture. In this category, so I definitely think it has a shot to spoil for the win. But I, you know, I don't think it'll take over students, but it definitely could. And also, I see you by Coco Jones. Just like I think she has a shot in performance, I also think she has a shot to win in best army song as well. But I don't think she can take over SZA and Victoria Monet. But I see you definitely has a shot, so don't count her out. But this is definitely a battle between Snooze and On My Mama. I think Snooze will and should win the battle. But don't be surprised if On My Mama ends up taking this category. But I think Snooze will take it. Let's see what happens. And on to one of the other easy categories this year besides uh, Best Pop Vocal Album. And that's Best Progressive R&B Album. This is a done deal. It's, you know, wrap it up, bow. It's, a, you know, hang it up, flat screen, it's done. Uh, this is definitely going to Scissors SOS. And that's who will and should win this category. SOS is one of the biggest, you know, moments this year in R&B. She really defines this year R&B-wise. So, and this album was a whole masterpiece. It was a moment. It definitely should, and it will win this category. I'll be happy when it happens. This is a lock, in my opinion. Um, but if there were to be a spoiler for this category, I would say, obviously, it's the only other album that's nominated for Album of the Year as well. And that's Janelle Monae's The Age of Pleasure, uh, which is definitely in second place. But, unfortunately, SOS is... Not unfortunately. SOS is taking this. But if there were to be a spoiler... It'll obviously be The Age of Pleasure by Janelle Monae, but this is going to, this is going to SOS. Easy. <laughs> Last category for R&B, and that's Best R&B Album. I think this is pretty locked up, but, you know, we'll see what happens. Who I think will win, and that's Jaguar 2 by Victoria Monet. I feel like this is the album that deserves to win the most, so it's, it's also who I think should win as well. I love this project. It's my favorite album in the category, and it's one of my favorite albums of this year. It truly was such a well-sequenced, produced, sung, written, arranged album. 
uh, Jaguar 2 is a whole, it's an amazing project. So I definitely think it will win this category and it should win this category. If there were to be some spoilers, uh, we have a few, namely Girls Night Out by Babyface. I think Baby, Babyface definitely has a shot. He's a veteran, His, the album was great. And you know, I think he, if it wasn't for Victoria, he probably would've won this category. So I think he's definitely the spoiler. And also what I didn't tell you, Deluxe by Coco Jones. You know, besides ICU, her album and her, her EP didn't make that much noise, but it was a great project and she's had a great year. So she could win this category. And also Summer Walker's Clear 2 Soft Life EP. I could definitely see it being a dark horse winner for this category as maybe like as redemption for how the Grammys have like stumped her year after year in the past couple of years for her other albums. Uh, she could win this category as you know, as a kind of a, make a makeup for that. But I definitely don't think Victoria will lose this category, but those are my spoilers if she does. So we'll see what happens. All right, now we're on to the rap categories. First up, we got best rap performance. Uh, so who I think will win this category and who I think should win this category, that's Drake and 21 Savage with Rich Flex. Even though there's like better songs in this category, I do think that Rich Flex to me, I would've, I wouldn't, I wouldn't pick this personally, but out of the category, out of the five that we have here, who I think should win this category and who I think will win is Rich Flex. You know, to me, it had the best impact. It was just a great performance and you know, great production, great, great bars, great energy throughout the track from Drake and 21. And to me, it was definitely one of the most impactful rap songs of this of this Grammy period. So I think it will and it should win this category. But if there were to a spoiler, I definitely think it's you know Scientists and Engineers by Killer Mike, Andre 3000, Future, and Aaron Allen Kane, and also The Hillbillies by Kendrick Lamar and Baby Keem. I definitely think Scientists and Engineers and The Hillbillies stand a good shot to be, you know, you know, take the win for this category. But I do think that Rich Flex will take it in the end. But if Rich Flex were to lose, I could definitely see him losing to Scientists and Engineers or The Hillbillies. All right, now we're on to best melodic rap performance, which to me is definitely one of the most locked up categories this year. Uh, who I think will and should win this category, and that's definitely Lil Durk and J. Cole with All My Life. I feel like to me this makes the most sense. It definitely was one of the most impactful you know, rap songs this year. Uh, amazing performance by both of these gentlemen. I definitely think they should and they will win this category. Uh, but if there were to be spoilers for this category, I see being one of the other ladies in the, in the category. Uh, that's you know either Low by SZA or Attention by Doja Cat. You know, to me, Low is a whole bop. With all the momentum that SZA has this year, I can see this being a category that she takes in her, you know in her in her haul for this year. And I can also see this being you know Doja Cat's win as one of the only wins she has of the night because I I think. I think Doja Cat will go home with you know with nothing, but if she were to win something, I think this is the category she has the best shot in, so I can see her taking it as well. But I definitely think this is all my life's to lose, uh, for, so I think it will and it should win. But if it were you know if it were to lose, I can see losing to low or attention. So. All right, now we're on to best rap song. So I was actually going back and forth with this category a lot, especially with you know rap performance in this category because who I think will win, who I think should win this category, and that's definitely Killer Mike with scientists and engineers. I think this is the best shot that Killer Mike has to take a Grammy this year. So I think they'll give it to him in this category. I, I was kind of talking, you know, back and forth between him winning performance or song. And at the end of the day, I think song makes a lot more sense compared to performance. And if he does win it, I think James Blake will win with him as well. Uh, Andre 2000 will win and Future won't win because I don't think Future will write the song. So it actually makes a lot of sense that I think he'll win best rap song. I think he should win it as well. If there were to be a spoiler, I can see it being one of the more popular songs in the category, either Rich Flex by Drake and 21 or Bobby Roll by Nicki and I Spice. Uh, but I don't want either of those songs to win. I wouldn't mind Rich Flex winning. I wouldn't mind Rich Flex winning, but I do think that Science and Engineers should and will win. But I wouldn't be surprised if Rich Flex takes it or if Bobby Roll takes it for sure. All right, now we're on to the last rap category, and that's the best rap album. So I was going back and forth with this category a lot, but I finally made a decision, and I'm gonna stick with it. Uh, who I think will win this category, and that's Heroes and Villains by Metro Boomin. I had Utopia winning for a while, and that's and it, to me that makes a lot of sense, but because I don't think Utopia is as good as Astro World. And because I think the Grammys are gonna wanna give Metro Boomin love somewhere, especially if he loses producer of the year, this makes the most sense to give it to him here. Especially because his album, even though I wasn't in love with it that much, his album really did have a lot of impact in the world this year when it dropped in December. So I think Metro Boomin will win with, with Heroes and Villains. But who I think should win this category, if I had it my way, I would definitely give it to Killer Mike for his Michael album. Killer Mike to me has the best album in the category, one of my favorite rap albums this year. Great project. 
I would give it the win, but I, I don't think he'll win it. But I think, you know, his, his concert prize will be him winning best rap song or maybe, maybe a performance. But I think he'll lose this category, but I would give it to him. Spoilers are definitely Utopia by Travis Scott. I think Utopia has a great shot to win. It's the probably, I think it's definitely the best selling and definitely, I think it had, it was definitely one, one of the most popular albums in this category for sure. I could definitely see it winning, even though it's not as good as Astro World, so that would be interesting if it did happen. And also, Her Loss by Drake and 21 Savage. Again, a really popular album this year. I really feel like Drake has not been awarded a, an album Grammy since Take Care. So, you know, it's kind of it's kind of like he's, he's, he's kind of due for one. And I feel like this is a good album for him to, to win it for. So I wouldn't be surprised if he wins it for this, uh, along with 21. But I definitely think this is going to be the Metro Boomin' show. But I could be wrong, so let's see what happens. Our next category is Best African Music Performance, uh, who I think will win, and that's Tyla with her track Water. Even though I don't want this to happen because she's such, she's still a very brand new artist, and we don't really know what her career will look like. This this Grammy that I think she will win could be justified, or it could be a fluke. But so I have to see, you know, wait to see what happens years from now. But I do think she will win this category because she has the biggest. A song in the category and really is a great song even though i don't think it should win a grammy it's still a really good song and it's a bop and it's it's the biggest song here so i think it will win but who i think should win if i had it my way i would give it to our star with her song rush i think rush should take this category i love the song so much i love ira and i love rush to me it deserves the win and, and to me it feels like more of a authentic you know african song compared to water even though water's a bop it has that i'm a piano sound in it it really is more of like a pop, you know, wide, mainstream appealing song that kind of loses a, a lot of that African essence. And, you know, Tyler's South African, but it really is a pop song. Whereas Rush feels like an African song. So I really, really would love for it to be the first winner of the category. But I think it'll go to water. Spoilers for this category, I definitely, if it's not Rush, I could definitely see it being Unavailable by Davido and Musa Keys. Or I'm a Piano by Ashake and Olamide. I feel like both of the songs have an equal shot at being a spoiler for the category, but I definitely think this is a battle between Water and Rush. So Next up is Best Music Video. So for this category, who I think will win, and there's definitely Billie Eilish with What Was I Made For. I love this video, so I definitely won't be mad. It's, it's not who, who I would give the win to, but I definitely love this video, so I definitely won't be upset when it does win. I'm pretty sure it'll win. I'll be shocked if it doesn't win, because it definitely was one of the most memorable, impactful, and definitely the most unique video in this category and it really you know is, is one of the is the video for one of the most interesting and you know awarded songs this year for one of the biggest moments this year with with the barbie movie so i definitely think it'll win uh, who i think should win this category though i don't think he will but i would give it to kendrick lamar's count me out i think it's a great video that's really underrated I love the way they set it up. I love the way that video is edited. I love the concept. I just love the visuals. I love that video. So I would give it to Count Me Out, even though I don't think I don't think he'll win it. Uh, spoilers for this category. I definitely I'm only sleeping by the Beatles. I think there's a lot of love behind this song in this video, even though I don't really see the hype like that. It was it, it, it was a cool video, but I don't think it should win. But I think it has a shot for sure. And also in your love by Tyler Childers. I checked out that video. It's a beautiful video, beautiful story, great visuals, it's cinematic. I could definitely see it being a dark horse winner for the category, but I do think this is gonna be the Billie Eilish show. But next category is best song written for visual media. So for this category, I think this is easy to tell. This is a wrapped up, hang it up, flat screen, wrap it up in a bow, it's done. Who I think will and who I think should win, Billie Eilish with What Was I Made For. Best song category, best written song. It's just a really great performance. It's great lyrics, it's a beautiful record. Uh, for one of the biggest movies and one of the biggest moments of the year with the Barbie film and all that. So I definitely think it will and it should win. Uh, spoilers for this category. If it's not going to be Dance Tonight, another uh, Barbie track, or maybe even I'm Just Ken, then I could see it being Lift Me Up, obviously. It's the only other track here that's not a Barbie track. <laughs> I definitely think Lift Me Up has a shot. I, I want to say it will be in second place after What Was I Made For. Uh, but I definitely think this is going to be What Was I Made For is Grammy to lose. Uh, but if there were to be a spoiler, I could see it being either... Uh, Lift Me Up by Rihanna uh, for the Black Panther soundtrack or uh, Dance Tonight by Dua Lipa or maybe even I'm Just Ken by uh, Ryan Gosling from the Barbie soundtrack. All right, y'all. So those are all the main categories that I cared about that we wanted to talk about in depth. Uh, but now let me quickly breeze through some categories that I'm not as familiar with and that I'm, I'm not as versed in, but who I definitely think I have my my finger on the pulse of who I think will win that category. So uh, first up is the alternative categories. So for best alternative uh, music performance, or I think it's a best alternative performance. 
I definitely think this category is going to Lana Del Rey for A&W. I think it should win that category. Great song, great, you know, great contemporary ballad slash trap ballad. That is really a really well-written and beautiful song. So I definitely think it will win this category and it should win that category. So shout out to Lana Del Rey's a &W. I think it's taking that. For best alternative album, I definitely think best alternative music album is going to Boy Genius for their album, The Record. It's an album of the year. And even though she's competing with Lana, they're competing with Lana Del Rey in that category, I definitely think Boy Genius has the better shot to win album of the year. And they're definitely gonna win this category as well. I think Lana Del Rey and Boy Genius are running the alternative categories. Uh, now for the country categories, uh, who I think will win best country solo performance. I definitely think that'll be Fast Car by Luke Combs. I'm really indifferent to who I think should win. I'm indifferent, but who I think will win is definitely Luke Combs' Fast Car. Biggest song in the category, the most well-known song. And I don't think Luke has won a Grammy yet. So I think it's kind of like, okay, now is his time, I think. So that makes the most sense to me. Uh, for best country duo slash group performance, I think this is a, a no-brainer. I also think it's going to go to Zach Bryan and Casey Musgraves for their track, I Remember Everything. It went number one on the Hot 100. One of the biggest moments of the year country-wise. And I definitely think they'll take this one for sure. And I also think they'll take home uh, Best Country Song as well. So I think they'll have both of those categories on lock. And I also think Zach Bryan will also win Best Country Album as well. He had the biggest album in that category. Because I don't think yet. Morgan Wallen's album wasn't nominated. So he has the biggest album in the category. And he's had a really good breakout year. So I think this will be his year at the Grammy. So I think he's going to win three. And Country Album will, will be in that hall as well. Uh, now moving on to some of the Latin categories uh, for best musica or bana album. Uh, this is definitely not my my category. I don't I don't listen to this music a lot, but I think I think I know who win. I think definitely this is going to Carol G's Mañana Será Bonito. I definitely think Carol G's taking this category. I think this is this will be her first win or maybe second. I think so. Shout out Carol G. I think she's definitely taking this category for sure. And for best Latin pop album, I think it's gonna go to Maluma for his album Don Juan. So I think those are who are gonna take those those uh, Latin album categories. For best audiobook uh, narration and storytelling, I definitely think this will go to Michelle Obama for her project, um, The Light We Carry, Overcoming in Uncertain Times. I definitely think this will be Michelle Obama's to, to Lose. I think this will be her second Grammy, I think. So shout out to Michelle, or maybe her first. So shout out to Michelle Obama for winning this category. I think this is definitely hers to lose. And for the Grammy for uh, you know best compilation soundtrack for visual media, I definitely think that'll go to the Barbie soundtrack for sure. I think this is Barbie to lose. It was the biggest you know moment in this you know this year in terms of a compilation soundtrack. So I definitely think it'll win this category. That's definitely Barbie's to lose. And in terms of best score soundtrack for visual media, again the Barbenheimer craze was real this year. I think that'll go to Oppenheimer. So I think Barbie will take uh, best compilation soundtrack while I think Oppenheimer will take a uh, best score soundtrack for visual media. That's going to Oppenheimer. So shout out Barbenheimer fans out there. Each, each one will get something. <laughs> now let's see what happens at the Oscars this year. <laughs> All right, y'all. So those are all of my predictions for the 2024 Grammys coming up on February 4th, 2024. I'm looking forward to seeing how well I do with my predictions. Uh, let me know your predictions down below. Uh, let me know who you're rooting for. Uh, let me know who, what are your picks in all the categories that I talked about and even other categories I didn't talk about, like, you know, the gospel and Christian categories, the rock categories, jazz, folk, bluegrass, uh, Americana, whatever, all the other categories I didn't talk about, engineering, you know, let me know who you think will win those categories for if you're a really big fan of those categories. And you know, for all the categories I talked about, you know, let me know let me know what you thought about the video. Let me know what you thought about my predictions. Let me know what are your predictions. Yeah, let's let's talk. Let's get into the comments down below. Let's let's really get into who we think is gonna dominate at the Grammys this year. Let's get into it. I definitely think the most awarded artist for sure will be SZA. I think she'll take anywhere from like four to six Grammys home. I'm predicting like five. I think she'll take home five. But let's see what happens come Grammy night, y'all. But yeah, man, thank you guys for watching the video. I appreciate it. And if you haven't already, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, okay? Appreciate y'all. And go subscribe to my Patreon and support. Appreciate y'all, man. All right, y'all. But this has been your boy Bright, the RB Kid. Thank you for watching. But for now, I'm signing off, baby. Bye, y'all. Peace. I came to vibe, you came to function, just do that, baby. Don't worry about nothing, no, no, no. no. I came to vibe, you came to function, just do that, baby. Don't worry about nothing, no, no, no. Relax just a little bit, you don't 
don't gotta worry, you can just...